today, we're going to learn a little bit about something called dimensional analysis. Uh, it's also known as factor labeling. Uh, older teachers, such as myself, sometimes use that phrase because we used to use that all the time. I'll explain where that came from later. Uh, now, dimensional analysis sounds like a fancy term or like it's going to be complex, but it's really not very difficult. Um, we want to first understand the purpose, and the purpose of this is simply to convert from one unit to another. Now, before we get into this, there are two phrases that we use quite a bit, and you need to understand uh, basically what those two things are. One is an equality, the other is a conversion factor. An equality is exactly what it states. It's two things that are equal to another, one another, but it's usually given in two different units of measure. So 12 inches equals one foot is an equality. One meter equals 100 centimeters is an equality. Now, from those, we create something called conversion factors. A conversion factor is <clears throat> a fraction that has a value of one. So in other words, if 12 inches is the same thing as one foot, that's like saying one foot over one foot, so the value is one. If one foot is the same as 12 inches, that's like saying 12 inches over 12 inches, which would be equal to one. So our equalities, for every equality, you can have two conversion factors. Pardon my ink pen here. So let's see what this will look like if we have a problem given to us. The problem we're going to look at is convert 14 inches to feet. So basically what I'm asking is 14 inches is equal to how many feet? And in order to do this, we have to look at a couple things. First of all, we need an equality and we're looking for an equality of both inches and feet. Um, Later, when we get into more advanced stuff, sometimes we don't have something that goes directly from inches to feet. But most of the time, to start with, and what we'll do today, you look for an equality that lists both inches and feet. And we find there that 12 inches equals one foot. We would find that on a conversion table, or sometimes you just know what they are, and this one is probably one that you just already know. <clears throat> so from there, we start working the problem. And when we go to solve the problem, we start with our given information or our given value, 14 inches. Now, we're going to set this up as a multiplication problem. And in science, um, we actually use a vertical line here to show the multiplication. Uh, we do that because, as with math, you don't necessarily use the dot because you have a lot of decimals in science, but also you have a lot of variables in science, x's and things, so we don't like to use the x either. Um, plus, using the vertical line helps us set up the problem so that we can visually see it. Now, when I say that we start with 14 inches and we're going to set up the problem, um, we got to remember, if I write 14 inches, if it was a fraction, that would be the same as saying 14 inches over 1. We don't have to write that part, but it's easy to visualize it if we do. So 14 inches over 1. Well, my goal is to get rid of inches and turn that into feet. So with a multiplication problem, how can I do that? I need to be able to cancel out my inches. So I need to multiply this by another fraction where the inches cancel out. So as most of you know, when you are doing multiplication of fractions, if I'm going to get a unit to cancel, I'm going to, I'm going to write my fraction bar there. If I'm going to get a unit to cancel, I need it to be opposite where it is right now. In other words, inches is in the numerator. I need to have inches in the denominator. So what fraction am I going to use? Well, if you will remember, we said that every equality has two possible conversion factors. This is where this comes from. I'm either going to use 12 inches over one foot or one foot over 12 inches. 
Well, which one? Do I need? Notice I needed inches in the bottom. So I'm going to use um, one foot over 12 inches. That allows me to cancel my units and it leaves me with feet, which is exactly what I want in this problem. So then I just simply do the math. And if I'm not mistaken, that comes out to 1.16 repeating. So that's going to equal 1.17 feet. Now, that is fa factor labeling in its simplest form, um, or dimensional analysis. Again, I told you earlier that sometimes we call it factor labeling, um, because again, these are conversion factors used to come up with the right labels, or the right units. So that's where that came from. But... Um, some of you may be thinking, well, I could have done that in my head. I didn't need to do this. That's probably true in many cases. Even if you think you can do it in your head, you need to be able to show how this works. In other words, okay, I could have done 14 divided by 12 and just punched it in my calculator. Well, but I need to show why I took 14 divided by 12 and not 14 times 12, or not 12 divided by 14. Um, you need to understand that because at some point these uh, dimensional analysis problems develop more than one step. They get a little bit more difficult. Okay, we're going to work a problem here where we want to know how many meters are in 0.75 kilometers. How many meters are in 0.75 kilometers? So the first thing we want to do is start with our given value, 0.75 kilometers. And we're going to set that up as a fraction and put our multiplication, and we know we need another fraction here. So, um, as we do this, we know that that means 0.75 over 1. I don't need a unit right here. It's just 0.75, so it's 0.75 over 1. Now, I need to use an equality that has meters and kilometers in it. So I'm going to use this equality. I can create one of two conversion factors. I can either say 1 kilometer over... I'm going to change the color on that one kilometer over 1,000 meters or 1,000 meters over one kilometer. So going back to my problem, I want to be able to cancel out kilometers. So I need, they are right now in the numerator, I need to get them in the denominator. Which one of these has it in the denominator? This one right here. So I'm going to write 1,000 meters over 1 kilometer. That allows me to cancel kilometers, leaves me with meters. So I just take 0.75 times 1,000. I don't need to get my calculator out because I know that if I multiply by 1,000, I'm going to move my decimal three places to the right. So that tells me that it is 750 meters. Now we're going to do a practice problem where I will give you a chance to work things out on your own. Okay, your problem is very simply, how many centimeters are in 12 inches? And your equality is 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. What is step 1? If you said... Step one was to start with the given unit. You are correct. 12 inches over one. We're going to write the given unit as a fraction. Now, what is step two? If you said step two was to figure out which conversion factor you needed to use, that's correct. So which of these two conversion factors 
is the best one to use for this problem. Forgive me, I had a mistake there. That should have been 2.54 over 1 inch. So, if you said that the conversion factor with 1 inch in the denominator was the one you needed to use, you are correct. 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch. Now, our inches cancel out, and we are left with centimeters, so we just have to do the math. If you said the answer was 30.48 but did not write units, you would not get that problem correct. You must write the units. It's 30.48 centimeters. Hopefully this quick tutorial helps you understand how to get started with dimensional analysis problems.